Welcome Black Hollywood Live fans. On today's Fit Club, we talk vape dangers, emission to Mars, and video game violence. Stay tuned for more. You're tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. Welcome, Fit Clubbers. We are back with an all-new episode. I'm your host, Saka Smith, joined by my lovely co-host, Miss TK Trinidad. What's up, y'all? How are you doing? I am fabulous. Better? Better? Well, I mean... With, with the calf strain cut. I watched the last episode, and I asked you how you're doing, and you were like, oh, no. Well, I mean, I'm alive. I yeah. didn't lose a limb, and yeah, it's just another day. Is Life it, can't always be great. Is the recovery continuing? Recovery well, yeah, I have, yeah I've, um, I'm not doing two and a half hours uh, every day, mm -hmm. thank goodness, but um, I'm doing it every couple of days, yeah. and then doing the Epsom salt baths and all this other stuff, so I should be good at, back in September. Nice. Cross nice. fingers. Um, I'm actually out of the gym a little bit myself. What? Um, I got LASIK last week. Um, oh, yeah, so, well, I didn't even know you wore glasses. Yeah, yeah I was wearing contacts for a while. Shock is the king I, of just not letting people know what he does. No, I've worn glasses on this show with you, though. I, sure. like, probably like once. <laughs> it's so, Very you know, rare. For so, um, but I got rid of them six months ago because I was just tired of having stuff in my eye. Mm -hmm. And then I just got to the point I just need to get the LASIK. I couldn't see sharp enough. So right. Finally, it's here. And my eyes are tender, but I can still I can see 2015. So... Okay. Yeah, but it's crazy that my <laughs> I, eyes... I, I really, I really saw you like 2015. Is like, but we're in 20. <laughs> I was like, oh, that LASIK did way yeah. more than it was supposed to do. But it's just crazy how tender the eyeball. Like, I mean, yeah, they, it's your body. They're stripping away. Wasn't it a layer or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. I didn't even know they did that. I'm glad they didn't tell me because I probably wouldn't. Wait, have done wait, it. wait, wait. So. You just went in not knowing the procedure? No, no, I knew the procedure, and I knew they would focus you on the laser doing the work. They don't tell you they're going to also take this flap off your eye and then do the laser. So they never mentioned the flap. I mean, maybe they did mention it, but I just didn't hear it. Yeah, you <laughs> chose not to hear it, because I don't know how I know it, and I've never had LASIK. But yeah, but as, as I saw it, I was like, oh my god, because they showed me the video of it afterwards. So some people will get, to, get a chance oh, so to see it. So was it like a little, you're going to tell us who did it, and a little sponsorship yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of you course. Shaka is the it. king of <laughs> all that. Hey, but now I can see clearly. I can see clearly now. <laughs> but um, some people that aren't breathing so clearly are some kids out in Wisconsin, Illinois. Our first story of the day is about the dangers of vaping. We've talked about it here. Mm -hmm. But some young people, this is the crazy part, are being are, have gone to the hospital with severe lung disease. Mm -hmm. 11 kids in Wisconsin and um, three in Illinois. And they're going to the ICU and getting on ventilators as a result. Um, and it looks like it's an infection, but it's, it's coming from the vapes. And they're saying an expert from the National Academy of Science, Engineering, and, um, and Medicine said that there's conclusive evidence to show that in these e-cigarettes, e-cigarette liquids, there's a lot of potentially harmful chemicals. Right. So uh, ha have you... What's your stance? Or <laughs> well, I mean, you have a lot of teenagers doing it because, you know, you don't have to be of age to, yeah. to do it or, you know, the age to, to buy cigarettes to do that. But the thing is, it's just like... You get a lot of, I put it like this, you get a lot of great stuff at the dollar store. Yeah. Some stuff is like comparable to the stuff that you get at Ralph's and Whole Foods. Some stuff it's like, no, the quality is not even cl close. And I think there's so many ver versions of the vape and there's no regulations on it that you don't really know the quality that you're getting. And, still, and then yeah. anything that you inhale is not going to be at, at that rate because you think it's cool and it's kids, they're probably doing it more than what yeah. they should be doing yeah. it. So, you know. Yeah, I think there's, they're using it often, uh, and I think that there's this idea that it's healthy. And maybe it's healthier, but there's this idea that it's healthy, and I think that, you know, they really promoted it as a healthy alternative initially, and I think that kind of got in people's mindset. Right. And so these kids are going around thinking there's very little harm to well, them. Well, they're but. even vaping at the gym. I was at the gym, and this guy was all upset. I'm like, one, let the other guy kill himself if he <laughs> wants to, if he wants to vape, vape at the gym. But this old man was, like, really upset. He's like, oh, it's not allowed. And I'm like, yo... <laughs> like he was old enough to make that decision but yeah. it's again there's so many things that can that are harmful to us but i think with kids because everything is developing yeah there's Even certain things so. that can be more triggered than others yeah so uh, of course you got to watch out if you know if you are using vapes no matter what age you want to make sure that i guess you're probably using them to a degree that's not excessive because severe lung disease seems like i know put the vapes down and yeah. pick up the chocolate cake i guess right <laughs> and then we, we can talk about some other issues after that <laughs> whole new set of problems <laughs> um the next uh the next story is actually about mental illness so we and I have a quote here. So you know, we had the mass shootings, of course. Yeah. Two, <laughs> two mass shootings. And we had um, a, a smaller one in California a couple. Uh, yeah, the Garlic Festival ago. in Gilroy. Uh -huh. So obviously, we have this epidemic. 
but I think a lot of people are talking about mental illness and different things to address the, the topic. Mm -hmm. And so recently, um, I, President Trump made some comments, and he said, we must reform our mental health laws to better identify mentally disturbed individuals who may commit acts of violence and make sure those people not only get really? treatment, really? But, when necessary, um, but when necessary, voluntary confinement. This is what we do. This is what you're um, quoting President Trump? Well, no, I mean, for I think this conversation is important on, on the mental illness portion because I think we all have kind of leapt to the idea that we need to address mental illness but what a lot of experts are saying is that blaming these solutions on mental illness um, are inaccurate and stigmatizing. So, um, out of the Department of um, American Psychological Association, they're saying that it's unfounded that mental illness is really associated with these mass shootings. So, you know, one in the, our mental illness rate, one in five adults in the U.S. have mental illness, 46 million people. <laughs> what is this smile from? He, like, I mean... <sighs> There's like so many things. One, the fact that President Trump says it's mental illness when it when it comes to people that look like him that did the mass shooting versus when other people that don't look like him get shot and killed yeah. is a whole issue. Two, one of the reasons why people it's it, it's a combination of mental illness and PTSD and everything else is going on. If you don't give, you know, a majority of the population proper health care, proper education, a way to live, and now you have bills on top of all of that, you have DMV, if you have a car, you have all this stuff laying on top of you and then God forbid you have kids that you're trying to trying to survive, of course you're going to break. So it doesn't have yes, mental illness could be a part of it, but why don't you take care of the kids first. Yeah. There's so many different things that are causing these problems, and then we can we can talk about the media how it, we're not they're not even giving news, and now it's just rhetoric. Yeah, and and that's and that's what I actually and I don't want to say what surprised me, but kind of illuminated my mind because mental illness is one of those things I thought we really have to address when it comes to mass shootings. But you know what what was really outlined by this expert is that one out of five adults in the U.S. suffer from mental illness or have a mental illness episode per year. That's 46 million people, and our rates of mental illness and mass shootings don't mirror the rates of the world, whereas the mental illness rates mirror the rates well, of the world. Well, one of the reasons the, so, yeah. a lot of people that are in third world countries are not going to, like, you're not, they're dealing with so many other things yeah. that, you know, like, just think of the folks from the islands, yeah. right? Talking about your feelings is not a thing. Yeah, and, and even if you do break or you have mental illness, mental illness does not equal mass shooting. Right. Yeah, it doesn't mean okay, I'm suffering, so now that's. Or they the, don't because it, it's just, it's not the same thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to you know say mental illness is not a thing, but yeah. panic panic attacks. Pan, so many people in college have panic attacks. That's because of the pressure. Yeah. Right. So it's just like yes, we need to discuss these issues, but it's just like we. We always want to discuss the issues when there's a problem instead of actually starting from the beginning and then assisting people in just living not necessarily giving them money but giving them the basics the basic parts of life and dignity yeah and, and, and part of that is uh, addressing these, I guess, correctly. And so what what they have pointed out is there are three categories um, generally that the majority of mass shootings fall under. One is hate crimes. Mm -hmm. um, two is revenge, which revenge on like a, you know, the boss that got fired, but you killed several coworkers right. as well. Um, and domestic violence, where it's the same, where you know you, you also kill the family as well as yeah. The target I remember the was. seal, the seal beach one. I was actually uh, interning at NBC, uh, ABC at that time, and that one was crazy. Like mm -hmm. I think it was like an uh, ex husband that came and pretty much shot up the whole like beauty salon and, and then people around it and it was just kind of like and see and when you identify the causes or the categories then you can look more to the solutions you know so I think we might be looking at mental illness but wait a minute if mental illness were really um, playing a huge role in these mass shootings well and, you... and so so we have the experts some of the experts are coming out and saying well, let's not go ahead and look at this as you know the, the the key trigger but let's look at some of these underlying like access to the guns as well so there's so many there, there's there's places that don't have guns there's places that do have guns mm -hmm. it's just the fact that you know we we are we're currently in a society where you you're everybody's screaming at each other and nobody's having a conversation yeah. everybody is taking one talking point and and putting it to their 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 daily uh, view of things and you know they're they're taking the stereotypes that you see on tele television and applying it to others like there there's so many other things beyond that that 
we have to discuss. Yeah. Then, you know, that the, the mass shootings that are happening are, are not just because we have access to guns and not just because of it's partly because of who the president is, but it's there's, there's so many other things that happened far before then. Oh yeah, yeah. It just seems like we got to address them all head on and make sure we're identifying the right the right areas well, to, you have to more do our faith focus. Than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, in in similar vein, um, the president uh, not the president, but there's also been a uh, a large conversation about the violence in video games and whether they're not that contributed to mass shootings. But you know, like I, I you know, you're rolling your eyes, but I think that's actually been a long conversation in this country whether or not video games contributed to violence. I remember hearing that argument um, for quite a while, not really knowing what the answer was, but just hearing the argument for a while. Uh, and you know, the experts are saying actually the converse is true. That in some studies that have even shown, um, they did a study in Singapore in July that really recently shown there's the inverse is true, mm -hmm. where aggression is lower, and um, with those that engage in video games, because I guess they're able to kind of get out the aggression right. through the video game. So what we're seeing is that these video games aren't necessarily con <laughs> contributing to these mass shootings, but it, it's so important to make sure that we are crossing it's, these off the list of excuses it's people a are using. Band-aid, but they've been using that. They've been using that excuse for years. They've yeah. been using music as an excuse for years. And the thing is, it the person while they're list or, or you you take whatever happens to that child. We're yeah. we're a product of our experiences. So you take whatever happens to you as a child versus you know grow, being raised by your parents, education, all this other stuff and you apply you watching video games that that element of you shooting up a school happened before you started playing the video games yeah. so it's in that element of you doing something that you're not supposed to be doing doing something illegally happening happened before you start listening to the music yeah so it's just it's it's there there are people out there that are really just using because it's it's a, a way bigger picture but I, but I think I I think with these things being new mediums it seemed to be things that people wanted to kind of hold on to. And, and I think rationally it made sense that we're exposing kids to this new form of violence and maybe that's why they're being more violent. But the studies don't bear out bear out that, that conjecture. Um, this was in the Journal of Youth and Adolescence. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but it's just, I think it's just important that we start to call some of these things out and some of these kind of like smoke screens out and we do so in a way that we look at the studies, we look at what the, the studies right. are saying about them. So, so we'll see. <laughs> hopefully, you have more faith than I do. Well, I, I think the conversation is being had. Maybe it's being had forcefully in a way that we didn't expect it to be had. But I, I think we're now talking about these mass shootings in a way that we're demanding action. Are we? So it seems so. It seems so. So we'll see what the next few days bring. Okay. Can I chime in real quick? Yeah. This is Ryan in the booth. I just want to get your opinion on. I hear a lot of people whenever they bring up the video game uh, topic with with this is that you know all these other countries have the same video games, but they don't have the same problem. Problem. Yeah. Do, do you think that that is a a, a site to source uh, when it comes to this discussion? Like, how how big do you think that point bears in this conversation? I think that point is huge because the video, especially video games today, because we're talking about video games now in 2020, 2019, which are even more realistic than they were when they came out. Mm -hmm. They're they're more violent, they're more bloody, and they are like pervasive around the world. I think you know before you used to have them concentrated in the United States. But now they're pervasive around the world and we're really seeing that it's maybe access or maybe the rhetoric that's coming out of different leaders in the country that might be fueling some of this well, stuff. Well, I mean, again, it's just people that are putting Band-Aids on stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the thing with that is that people, there's a lot of things that are different from here to other countries if you take out of Europe and stuff like that, there's, you know, more openness about sexuality, not necessarily fluidity, but more like kids are taught about sex earlier. Yeah. There is there's more openness about, you know, being honest as far as if you take um, Germany, they, they are very honest about the Holocaust and they teach it as is versus masking and saying it never existed. Yeah. There's so many other things that, that are that are playing into that part that other countries are doing a lot better jo a better mm -hmm. job than America's doing. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I think access is the big thing because uh, obviously even if you were to say video games are contributing, which uh, no study seems to bear that out, but even if you were to say that was contributing, certainly if you only had access to um, certain weapons and not others, if you didn't have access to assault weapons, if you didn't have access to guns at all. So it, it just depends on, I think that's a big part of it, and the background checks and making sure people have different access to, to who's getting the guns right. legally or illegally as well. But if you look at the people that did the mass shooting, and I, I haven't 
I haven't looked at all the mass shootings that have happened, yeah. but if you look at the people of, that did the mass shooting, it usually is ha it's usually because of some type of element, because they're not, the Columbine, like it, it was because he was a loner, it's because he felt yeah. certain ways that that brought out those emotions. Therefore, he did this. Yeah, and some are legal purchases too, and so you know, you're not going to address all the problems, right? But, but hopefully, they're taking some action on some of the problems. Yeah, we'll see. We'll and see if I think it's just really to... bigger than it's really bigger than than mental illness and yelling back oh, and course, forth about yeah. getting rid of the guns is not necessarily going to be the answer per se because say if you get rid of the guns and you still have all those other problems. Oh, we have yeah. I think it's going to be a multi-pronged attack on how to address what's happening. So we'll, we'll see where we go with we'll that. We'll see. Uh, but it, oh, I do. Before yeah. you start or start, yeah. Ryan and Booth, can you pull up uh, Google Rihanna Barbados Carnival and we'll talk about it after at the end. You got it. Awesome. Um, and you know, if, if any of this is bringing anyone anxiety, <laughs> these conversations about mass shootings, uh, I'm going to give you some interior design tips uh, for better sleep. Do you even interior design your place? Uh, of course, of course. Oh, okay. I, 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 when you're you doing know, the deboxing well, videos? Well, we, we, had, yes, <laughs> we had Steve Green and Nikki Lima on, and Nikki's really into feng shui, and she kind of put me up on how to organize my place and my space. Mm -hmm. um, but number one tip is declutter. Mm -hmm. um, of course, declutter is going to give you a sense of peace. So do you, is that what do you employ? Um, yeah, I definitely believe in decluttering or taking. Um, well, what are you going to ask? Do you have like a busy bedroom, or is it like super simple? Um, um, it gets busy based off of what's happening in my life. So if I have a <laughs> no lot of events, yeah, <laughs> I have a lot. If I have a lot of events and a lot of stuff going on, and like literally the goal is to eat and sleep, mm -hmm. then the, it just goes all out of the way. When I have a moment. I try to do like a deep clean and then I do a medium clean and then I do like I just need to have things in order. Yeah. <laughs> but it definitely does get to the point where it's just like I'm in a rush, I might have a red carpet and I come back and my room looks like it's been yeah. torn apart. But I definitely believe in that. I believe in keeping things in, in its place and, you know, keeping stuff organized. I'm a very organized person, but, you know, sometimes life happens. Yeah, you know, wh one thing I like to do is always make my bed. I forget who told me or who said it, um, but someone said, you know, one thing I always do is make my bed because no matter what kind of day I had, mm -hmm. I always get to come home to that made bed. I and, agree with that. And I started doing that just because no matter what kind of, it makes you feel good when the bed is like, <laughs> yeah. when you come home to it. I, I agree with that. I usually start the year off like that. And then eventually it's like, <laughs> when you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning, the last thing you want to do is make your bed. Like, I literally, if I have to do early mornings, I literally have my stuff out and it's like a roll out of bed, go to the bathroom, put stuff on and then leave. Yeah, like, if you're in any longer, you might just stay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, unfortunately that's not the case. But I do um, prescribe to like different color sheets and all, yeah. like different stuff like that. Just, you know, creating the, the, the place that's supposed to be your sanctuary, uh, you know, your sanctuary. Sure. And of course they say you want to get the light right, and so um, you want to make sure that you want dark as possible in the mm -hmm. room, if possible. Some you people. Want, you want to eliminate blue and natural light, and of course we get blue light from the phone, so, and that's, when the, that's what you want to eliminate. Yeah. So you want to kind of put your phone away. Um, and what is it? They also said you want to make sure that you keep the the noise low. Yeah. But a white noise for some people is. Yeah, I have. Um, I went to Dallas shoot, two weeks ago for um, Shout to Rasta Free. It's a hair company. They they flew me and a couple other girls out oh, to Dallas for nice. a hair show. Okay. And um, we had pretty much three to like a suite. It was a pretty big suite, but it was like the two bedroom, the two beds, and then you have like the pullout. And one of the girls was like, oh, well, um, I like to watch like TV while I sleep. And me and the other girl's <laughs> like, oh, well, we'll help you with this pullout. Like there's no, there's really no, because I'm pitch dark, but my mom on yeah. the other hand watches, like she always has a t yeah. television on. So I know people are a little bit yeah. different, but I, I prefer pitch dark super quiet because then that, that allows me to fall asleep faster but then also if something happens then I'm not used to that noise I don't know I always think that something crazy is going to go on so <laughs> I like, like I, I always like to be aware of things and not think oh well that's just the TV when you know the murderer is really standing over yeah. your bed yeah <laughs> that's your thought process <laughs> that's my thought process zero to a hundred maybe, maybe that'll get me to turn off the TV I like to fall asleep to the TV but when I'm able to kind of discipline myself I fall asleep a lot better when it's off oh no I turn yeah. the TV off like there's there's a point like, if it's work mode and, like, we're working day to day to day, it's like, okay, it's time. Like, yeah. I, I turn off the TV and it's like, we're, gonna, we're going to sleep, especially if it's, like, super early mornings. Yeah. Huh. So. Well, that, that's uh, one of the good ones. And then the wall color 
is good for setting the mood, but you want to make sure that you don't pick a dark wall color if you don't have too much natural light. Mm -hmm. And if you do have a lot of natural light, then you can experiment with darker colors. Yeah. And then the last one we talked about a little bit is your sound, your smell, and your feel. So you mm -hmm. want to get the good sheets. Um, you want to get sheets that are like moisture wicking mm -hmm. so that you're not sweating or whatever. Especially in the night. summer. Um, and then essential oils. I use a lot of essential oils. I have my little mister that oh, makes Of course you would. <laughs> I also do, I don't know where I picked this habit from. I don't know if it was from my mom or from somebody, but I also, when I do fresh sheets, I put um, baby powder uh -huh. down and then I put the sheets. I put the, the the fitted sheet, then I put baby powder, and then I put the other sheet. I don't know why, but it just gives that like nice, toasty, like it's like almost like an extra toasty. But don't you get the baby powder all over you? No, because by the time you, like this is, I put put it on and it's not, I don't put it on like right before bed. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like, where does it go? It just kind of I guess it seeps it, I, I don't know. <laughs> it goes somewhere, but it, it feels like toasty for okay. some reason. It might be totally, totally a germ thing, but. It feels toasty. Well, I'm gonna give that one a go. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and then you want to make sure that you're creating good routines. So you want to try to wind down about two hours before you before bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? That is hard. You know, some, you know, some people do it. Some people do it with a drink or a cigarette or you know. So you. But some people have their routines. You yeah. probably want to do it a little bit healthier than that if you can. Yeah, because I find um, the yeah. drinks um, when I cut it because I used to drink like with my meal, yeah. but I found that the next day it was harder for me to start. Like just get up and yeah. go. So it's like I mean, kudo. Everybody's body is different, but I, I when I eliminated that, I was like, oh, yeah. now I can get up and I don't feel like you know somebody shot me. Because even one drink, even even one drink is gonna dehydrate you. Mm -hmm. And then that plus the eight hours, if you're getting eight hours or six hours of sleep, mm -hmm. it's gonna dehydrate you further. Right, and if you're so not drinking enough water, and you're just you not know. gonna feel good. Yeah. yeah. So, so say lovey. Well, and in the. Uh, in the sort of interesting uh, fitness news and health news, um, they say a mission to Mars could lead to cognitive impairment and uh, anxiety. I thought to Doesn't myself, it take seven years to get there anyway? <laughs> I thought to myself, that makes sense. <laughs> cognitive impairment <laughs> and anxiety. Um, but they did this in the journal, they did a study in the journal of eNeuro, because apparently when you go to this mission to Mars, you're exposed to low radiation. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, to test this, they use these poor mice, but they, they, <laughs> they, they, they tested these uh, mice, and they found that these mice also had cognitive impairment as a result, right. um, with the functioning in the prefrontal cortex being low in the hippocampus as well. And so they looked at this and they found that as a result of their testing, if on a mission to Mars, one in five astronauts would be likely to get anxiety and one of three a astronauts would be likely to have cognitive me or me memory issues. And they all would have cognitive reasoning issues. Yeah. Didn't we do it? Was it on here where we did is like two twins went somewhere? And one, be, came like, back, and one like after came, a year in yeah. space, he had cognitive issues on, on point and, But term, he was yeah. also like skinnier, or he was chunkier. It was yeah, like I forgot. Something. I forgot what the muscular was, but yeah. I remember the cognitive, the cognitive and the, reasoning was gone. Yeah, or not gone, but it was lower than his twins. But so. I mean, of, of course, as you all know, I'm not a scientist, but if it takes seven years to get to Mars and you're in this, you know, capsule, and it's not a capsule, it's still, uh, but you're in the middle of space, it's not your surroundings, and of course you've trained in it, but still. Anything can happen. So, so it's not worth it for you if you could be the first woman on Mars. No. no. And no. they come to you and they say, "Look." They this actually is it. found a. I think there was a study this weekend that there's a possible new planet, which is um, we can actually live on supposedly. But no. No, no, you don't want to be the trailblazer. No, not in that. <laughs> not, not in that. Not in that way. In any way, shape, or form. I'll pass. And what do we have in um, our celebrity Rihanna? News? I can't even believe, believe you like missed all of this. Like it's been like Carnival like weekend. If you guys don't know what Carnival is, yes, it's yes, like yes. think Brazil, but it's not. <sighs> I guess Brazil kind of part of that. Brazil's kind of part yeah. of it, but the the education why I'm signing because there's just so much more to that. There's like 76 carnivals um, every year. Mm -hmm. That's all throughout the year, and this past week has been like a barrage of carnival. So you had Car carnival in Toronto, so Drake had his OVO Fest, but you also had carnival. Then you had carnivals in Barbados, then Antigua, then there's um, one in, um, uh, there's another one that's happening actually right now, and then there's gonna be one in London, one in New York, then Miami, and it goes on and on and on. Um, the reason I bring it up, because Rihanna looked absolutely amazing. She was in Barbados, she's originally from Barbados, she typically goes to her carnivals all the time. Known for her body positivity. Body positivity, yeah. and that's the great. And that's the great thing about carnival. Like the thing I love about carnival is, um, you can be any shape or size, and you're literally just like freeing yourself. You're in all these costumes. They're beautiful, and you feel it's like you're. Um, 
I don't know, it's your day to fit, feel amazing yeah. and just let the music take you away. So like shout to Rihanna because she's always going to represent. She looks amazing. She had this like these pink feathers and oh, there's there's a, she had these pink front feathers and she was just like living her best <laughs> life. So um, and I, I think too, um, from when I heard she had gained some weight, but she really doesn't care. Yeah, the media had kind of come out of it. Or like, like, people were talking about yeah, it. Yeah, but she's she happy said, yeah. and she's in love. And, like, let her live her best life, even though people are still clamoring for that album. I don't know if it's yeah, going to come. And she just we'll started see. that new fashion house, the first under, what is it, Louis, um, Louis Vuitton. I think so, yeah. yeah and then she has the Laquan. makeup line. And she has so much stuff going on to her. So shout, shout. But then she still has time to party in Barbados for Crop Rover. So oh. definitely want to give her a shout out. And then I noticed that uh, the season for nominations are heating up. So we'll have some more celebrity news on uh as the award show season begins, it's mm -hmm. already starting. I'm already getting these emails about, you know, nominate this and nominate that. There's too much. There's too. It's like, I just don't want to watch TV anymore. The, but that I was can't. one of the things that surprised me when I came to LA was that I didn't realize like these Emmy nominations were things people lobbied for, and like mm -hmm. you know, Academy Award. Uh, they lobby for everything. The, yeah. the 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 Hollywood Walk of Fame is lobbied for. Yeah, it's I, not given. It's not just given oh, to you because you're a nice person. Oh, you have to apply for it. You yeah. To, and then if you apply and you get it, you got to pay. <laughs> yeah. You still you pay for the application, then you pay. You pay thirty thousand for the star. Yeah. Yeah. You pay for the star, then you have to pay for the the yearly uh, upkeep because oh, it's pretty wow. much. Almost people who pee all over the stars. I've seen it. Hey, Hollywood got to make money. Yeah, so like you, you see all of that. So it's just, it's. I mean, a lot, a lot of that stuff is. I mean, it is what it is. Oh, well. What, what, what are your your tips for summer that you're employing right now? Are you, are you finding yourself giving a lot of advice right now that you're out of the gym? Am I giving a lot of advice that I'm out of the gym? Yeah, like since you can't kind of go as hard as you want, you find yourself giving to other people, saying, "Hey, let me, let me." Let me. Uh, no, I don't do that. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I, I just it's it's so different when you get out of a routine because I'm so used to it used to it being my daily routine of just yeah. going to the gym and it's so different now like just like not going where it's just like I find that my thought process of like how I do my assignments or how I, I break down certain things or how I handle business decisions is not as focused and sharp as it was when I was going to the gym on a regular basis because yeah. usually the gym takes up time yeah. and then you're under you're under a time constraint because you have to do everything else because adulting is just not fun yeah. so it's just kind of like I, I find that because I have more time my body's a little bit more relaxed but therefore I'm still not getting as much done as I was doing when I didn't have at that time yeah so it's 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 kind of weird so I'm looking forward to getting back but it's also um figuring out what to do like i know what i'm supposed to do but i'm not used to going that light yeah. like just like oh hey, take take that moment because that so. can be the, that's every every athlete's achilles heel is taking light when they're supposed to well right? that's that's the problem i can't yeah. like my doctor is like look you can't and he's like, you you really lucked out. I lucked out because I have a really good friend. Shout out to Derek Johnson. He's an Olympic weightlifter. So definitely go look at look look at him. He has, like, all the rehab equipment. So I was able to go there every day and do rehab. But if it wasn't for, like, him, like, that would have been thousands of dollars on yeah. a daily basis. So it was just, like, I was able to rehab. And when I went to see my doctor, he was amazed at how quickly I healed compared to, like, two weeks ago. So, um I'm taking it lightly knowing that, like, I, I really can't afford any. That was just, yeah, like, a teaser injury. Yeah. I can't afford any real injuries because, yeah, I don't think my body will appreciate yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, and the way the healthcare is set up, that's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that conversation another time. <laughs> that's why, that's that's a whole nother, and then you're talking about women and pregnancy, and there's so many things that are going on, This and that's why it was, like, really frustrating when we were talking about that. Um, I think it was the second or third story where it's just kind of like where there's so many things that are going on that are affecting everybody. Yeah. Where it's just kind of like, like I went to um, the DMV. I had to go and get my new card. The line was crazy. Then you had, they have new DMV cards where you have to, you, can, you have to use them for the passport thing. So now you need two pieces of ID and you need this and you need that. Social security office is crazy. They lost my application. Like, it's just like crazy. Yeah. And if you don't have some type of self-awareness or something to keep you grounded or, you know, you might snap. Yeah. And it's like there's the system's not set up like I, I get it. It's like one of those. It's a capitalist society. But beyond the one percenters, 
how can you not expect the people who are not even living above board not to yeah. crack? And you gotta and you gotta be doing all that while watching out for your physical health, your mental health. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and then just the, trying to live. And maybe the people that you have that are depending on you yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So. And then try to eat healthy, and then yeah. now you have diabetes, and you haven't been to the doctor in five years. Like it's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, and it feels like it piles on. Oh yeah. But um, so. but hopefully we can be a small, bright, somewhat light in that in that struggle. Well, I mean, <laughs> somebody's enjoying you having your. Well, I, small shirt on. Well, I try to do my part in any way I can. Um, guys, thank you for joining us as always. My name is Shaka Smith. You guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Shaka Strong. And you can find me on everything at TK Trinidad. We'll see you guys next week. Ciao. On behalf of our BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. Of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.